hey guys i'm angel welcome back to my channel i was in a bad mood yesterday and i realized after you know prayer and just listening to myself and all the things i say that was just it had to happen i was listening to time and is everything by bishop bishop td jakes and i've listened to that one before but this time i actually heard what he was saying like you know he was talking about the roots and the weeds and about planting seeds and how a seed grows down before it grows up and he was just talking about this how wheat is like an unusual thing in the environment it's just it was he was just really talking to me bottom line that's just what i'm gonna say he was really talking to me and yesterday i allowed myself to stay in a bad mood all day like i didn't give anybody my bad mood i just didn't talk to nobody like, I just did not want to be a part of the world. I didn't want anything to do with the world. But I thought that was, like, the devil. I'm not, no, God letting the devil, you know, consume me. But actual, in actuality, that was me. Like, this thing is so hard and it's so new and I wanted to give up. I wanted to give up because it's easier to give up than to keep going. Like, I've been making all these little sacrifices that I think that... Sh I should get more credit for it. and it's just it was just like yesterday I was just having to watch everybody around me still be a part of the world and it was like no one cared that I was in a bad mood no one even asked me if I was okay you know I mean there was nothing wrong so if they would have asked me like I would have been like you know I don't know just have a bad day but like literally like no one even cared no one even asked and it just made me feel kind of stupid because i went in there with this mindset like i can't wait till somebody asks me what's wrong so i could tell them what's wrong with me and i didn't even know what was wrong with me so if they would have asked i would have looked stupid because like i was literally just mad because i want to get my nails done don't judge me don't judge me i want to get my nails done my phone's off right now and it's just like a whole bunch of stuff you know just keeps happening like and i get it but it's just like <laughs> hard and new and humbling i know i kind of get the lesson the lesson he's trying to teach me here you know no one cares about anyone but themselves people are so consumed in themselves that they wouldn't even look at you and ask you if you're okay because they can't do it they physically cannot do it because me valid them asking me if i'm okay is like hard for them because no one's asking them are they okay no one's doing anything about anything they're going through so they don't give a crap about what other people are going through and I felt that yesterday. And it made me realize that everyone's going through the same thing in a way. In a sense, everyone's just dealing with their own different battles, own trauma, own pain that I don't even know anything about. And I'm not just talking about black people, I'm talking about white people too. This white woman told me, she told me that she has a husband and they still live check to check. So me not knowing that, I'm like, so if the checks stop, you're like struggling, essentially just like me. So you're just a couple of paychecks above me and where I'm at, but you're still struggling. And it was humbling. It was very humbling. I've never heard a white, white person say they're struggling. Like I've always, I don't know. I just always seen white people as people that don't struggle because they're white. You have every advantage ever given to man. You shouldn't struggle. You should thrive, actually. But yesterday was just a very humbling experience, and I'm better. I'm better. My friend Andrew came over. We talked. I told him all this stuff yesterday. Just saying the words is just so powerful. And... I don't want to give up. I don't want to give up. But like I said, there's a lot of things that are in me that he's trying to get out of me. And not having this phone 
is literally making me cocoa for cocoa puffs. Like, it's just like, fuck. Rent my phone. I pick my rent, which is okay. I was a responsible decision, I guess. But, yeah, those are the things. That was why I was mad. I was mad because I want some Zaza. I want to get my nails done. My eyebrows need done. And God's got me over here learning lessons. <laughs> Humbling me. And me realizing what a true sacrifice is. And I was listening to How to Discover God. His voice, part two, by Pastor Torway. Spoke to me too. Spoke to me too. It's just... I can't do life without God, man. I hated that feeling yesterday, but I wanted it. I wanted it so bad that I woke up and put myself in a bad mood because I'm not getting the things that I want and feel like God should give me right now. And that's so selfish of me. Just because I've done some work doesn't mean there's not more work to be done. And last night I was sleeping. I slept so beautiful. Like It was just like... I heard his voice talking to me while I slept. It was like, I prayed for that too. I prayed for just protect my mind. If anything else, just protect my mind and I'll do the rest of the work. Like if you could just start, I'll know you started because I planted the seed, like just start and I'll do the rest of the work because I don't wanna be dark like that. I don't want to be, I don't want to be putting myself in a bad mood just so somebody can ask me what's wrong and I don't know what's wrong. So essentially, like, I'm just, like, just being a Debbie Downer for no reason. The birds were just on my window last night while I slept. I heard it. I heard it all. It was like I was sleeping, but I was awake because I heard everything. It was weird. It was different. It was new. And... I don't know what's gonna happen these next few years of my life, you know, and this journey with God. But I know that whatever it is that he has me building myself up for is gonna be big. So I don't wanna be treating God like he's a sugar daddy and he's supposed to come through right then and there. If I call you, you come and you give me what I desire because it's not how God is. He don't. I shouldn't even compare him, like in my mind, this isn't me comparing him. In my mind, I'm comparing him to sugar daddies that I've had. Men that just do whatever I want them to do just because I'm pretty. I did what you wanted, so now give me what I want. Like, walking with God right now, I feel like I kind of have that mindset. Like, I've done all these things. And yeah, you keep coming through, you keep coming through for me, but like, I want all of it. I want what you promised. I want it now. I don't want to wait any longer. I'm tired of waiting. I've been waiting long enough, you feel me? But it's not like that. It's not like that with him. So to even put my, have my mind put him in that category, I just had to spank my hand yesterday. Like, no, 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 you're not thinking right. You're thinking like Angel. You need to think like him and then let him talk through Angel. You feel me? But today I'm better. And I think I'm just going to be better because I'm just going to choose better. I'm going to choose to stick to everything that I'm doing. Like smoking, I know smoking, it only just makes me feel high. And then I don't feel elevated, if that makes sense. Like, I'm already elevated. I'm already high on just God's knowledge and everything. So when I'm smoking, I'm just dumbing myself down to the world's high and what it means to be high. So then I get lost in that. It's just so many things that hold me to me. You know, things I'm holding on to because that's all I've ever known. And I'm growing. I feel myself literally growing every day with him and myself as a mother, just doing different things, man. like. I have my friend Susie gave me this little uh, Bible for the kids. I've been reading it to the kids every night. 
I have noticed that Amaya has just been waking up absolutely in a good mood. I skipped yesterday because I decided to go to the store and get a drink. And then I was just like, oh my God, I'm too drunk to just read a book for my kids. But yeah, me saying those words, the first day I read the book, I started it two days ago. So the first time I read the book, I get a knock at my door, right? I'm just reading it and it's like, what, seven to eight o'clock at night. I'm reading the book and guess who's at my door? Izzy, right? You wanna know what this little baby tells me? She says that she had a key, but she was at home and she heard a knock on her door and it was so loud and it was so scary to this little baby that she ran over to my house. The house where I'm like, this is a safe house. Like I'm like the best, like I love the kids. So like she came over here and for a second, like when she was at the door, I'm like, it's late, take your ass home. You know, but I just sat there and I just looked at her and like I could I could see that she was scared. Like, I don't think it was somebody knocking at the door. I think God was telling her to get her ass to my house. You feel me? Because like after, you know, I let her in, I'm telling like, you know, no talking. You're going, we're going to read this book and then you got to go because it's bedtime. So we're reading the book, we're reading the book and like I end up reading like, 20 30 pages of the book just because like my body something took over my body and like I knew she needed to Hear that and then the more interested she got the more interested Amaya got So then I was interested If that makes any sense but That's that's how powerful me saying the words are like I was only reading a book maybe five to like maybe two to three minutes in this book and this baby is at my house knocking at my door like something scared me can I come in like yes 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 you can this is a safe house this is a very safe house and she feels that she feels that here and she heard me she didn't, I don't know if she heard me, but God heard me and knew who needed to hear that. That's how big this thing is. And then another thing. So my friend from work, Tammy, she sends me on Wednesday, right? Day before the bad mood. She sends me a rail of Pastor Sarah's girl get up. And she said, thought of you when I heard that girl. I just that that blew my mind a little bit like in the sense of like I've watched Sarah for freaking years now you know so it made me feel like I'm not original you know like I'm not myself like I literally just mock Sarah you know just do everything that she does you know and I do because I think she's such an amazing soul and she's inspiring and she has love that I wanted to give. Like, I didn't even know her, but I knew that she had love to give me from just her talking. Like, she used to just pray for no nerves, no anxieties, no anything. Like, that was so cute. Like, as you're up there just doing this for God, you were nervous. I don't see that. I don't see that. I see her on, like, this high pedestal. You know, she's Bishop T.D. Jakes' daughter. Like, she's up there. But, like, she's not. She is spiritually, but, like, she's just like me. And that's why it's, like, easy. I could see where people could get it confused because I definitely just learned a lot from that woman. Like, I don't know the depth, depth of her story. But I know, you know, what she's told me about the teenage pregnancy, having the baby and all that stuff. But, like... Her story was powerful enough to open my eyes and just move me closer to the Lord. And it was just a lot of me in my day. From Wednesday to Thursday, it was a lot of me in my head. Instead of seeing that as like an honor or a blessing, like, wow, she doesn't even watch my videos. So she's just listening to me at work talking, you know? And I swore she wasn't listening to me. I'm like, girl, don't be listening. 
or you don't you do be listening because I just talk guys like I can really talk like when it comes to the Lord and I feel like somebody needs to hear it I'll tell you it all because this man this man this man this man he's real he's real and he'll come and yeah this is easier said than done but I know now any seed I plant is it's gonna be a seed then wheat, then bread. Seed grows down, then it goes up. But there's requirements, you know, watering it, sunlight, all those things. I learned that from Bishop last night. Love, love, love him. Put my friend Andrew onto him. It was something about what he said. My friend Andrew was drawn to the TV. We was both like this last night. The TV like. You, you hear that? <laughs> and then he be doing that thing where he's like, look over at your neighbor and tell them like, from weed, from, no, from seed. From seed. You get it. I know it, but I'm just, I get so excited that I, I lose my thoughts. But I was just listening. And I love being around someone who wants the word just as much as I do. Like, I am like, Andrew's gonna do amazing things in this world. I stand on that. And anybody that says anything different, please come in front of the Lord. I'm coming behind the Lord too because that's my friend. But he's gonna do great things in this world. Everybody that I know and ever made contact with is gonna do great things in this world. My best friend, my sister, all my little babies, my little homies, my homegirls. I almost gave up on this, man. Just so I can. I was trying to make the Lord mad at me. So he could be like, you're kicked out. You're no longer welcome here. But he didn't do that. He didn't say nothing to me. He just let me sit in me. Like I'm supposed to be doing, of course. Just sit in me. And I realized that I want to be a part of the world. When I'm not a part of the world, that's when I really feel alone. And scared and numb and I don't like that feeling no more. I've lived that for far too long. And there's just so many things in me that I gotta get out. So many characteristic traits that I didn't even know. My mom yesterday compared me to her. No, was it yesterday? It was Wednesday, it was freaking Wednesday. My mom comes and she gets the couch and she's just like, I'm like, you know, like I totally like the couch is fine, but like mom, like I just need a new couch because the energy, the energy on the couch is strong. Like I just need a new couch. <laughs> and she said, girl, if you don't sound like me. And I'm like, why is that funny? Like, why? Why mother? Why would you even say that to me? Like, why can't you just not say that? Like, <laughs> Jeez, I still just act like my mom. <laughs> it just it made me crazy a little bit, man. But yeah, I'm just working on myself. I'm working on myself, and I'm talking to myself, man. I'm proud of you, girl. Stop doing that to yourself. Not everything comes when you want it to come, but when it did come when you wanted it to come, you was like, so you didn't even enjoy it. You never enjoyed nothing. Enjoy this. Enjoy this peace of mind. Enjoy this feeling. Enjoy this energy. Enjoy the lessons. Enjoy just you. Whatever you do in life, don't forget to just enjoy you. There's nobody in this world <laughs> that is going to love you more than me. No one. No one. And if you don't love yourself, you know what happens, Angel. You don't let anyone in. You become closed off and angry. And you know what that does to us mentally? Please don't give up on me. Please don't give up on me. You've done that for far too long. Like, don't give up on me. 
just give me time to figure this out i know it's kind of confusing and new and overwhelming because there's so many feelings that i can't explain because i've never felt feelings in my life just be patient with yourself girl you're doing from where you came from to where you are now, you know it's a miracle. Don't deny yourself the miracle any longer. Stop believing those things. Because you know, we know, those aren't our thoughts anymore. And we feed those thoughts, then those thoughts are fed. And those thoughts take over. me time to figure this out we did drugs longer than we walked with god girl just wait be humble we need this we need this we need this we need this because so i don't want to give up on god and then have to go back and go through all that hell again not because of he gave me back the same hell. Like I, I've created new hell, a version of hell for myself. And then he'd heal me. He'd heal me because I wanted to be healed. I would want to be healed, but I don't want to die anymore. I don't know if you guys have ever, well, probably not, not a lot of people could handle it. But to see myself dead in my mind laying there all lifeless it does something to you because it's not like you just got shot up in a freaking shootout like i caused this death and at some point like it wasn't my mother's fault anymore like, it, those were my choices those are my decisions that i made and I don't want to see myself dead again. I don't want to have to go to him repenting again and have to feel that, see that. There's been too much work done. Too much work, you've come so far. Keep going. A moment of silence and we're starting now. Bye guys, until my next video.